she looked up into the sky and she, said, she says, what's that? And I looked up, it was triangle, with all different coloured lights all underneath, pink cerise, neon blue, white, purple. And uh, she says, what's that? And when I seen it, I knew straight away what it were. I thought, oh no. And she says, what? I says, get ready, we're going to be taken. Because I already knew who it was, what it was. Like, and it was just above that chimney there. Just there? Yeah. They float out of craft. They, they float, float out, down out the craft, and that's all I can remember. When the Greys come to take me, they wear black clothing. They wear a black polo neck jumper, what comes right up to the chin. Yeah. They wear black trousers and a black blazer jacket. Like they're wearing a suit, but without the shirt. They don't wear, I've never noticed them in all these all-in-one jumpsuits, whatever they call them, all-in-one suits. But greys aren't your normal run-of-the-mill aliens. They appear to have a sense of humour. They were moving things, trying to send me bonkers, actually. <laughs> what was moving? Ornaments, everything. They, they moved my fags, my cigarettes. No. They did, I put them on there and they moved my cigarettes. I looked for them, I couldn't find them. Just walked out there, throat, I thought, well, I haven't put them there. And I come back. And they were there again. They were moving things. They did them behind here. This is what they do sometimes before they take you. They like to play tricks. Her son Dominic and his best friend Danny have brought back the evening meal. Just a couple of these. For Chantal, takeaways often seem to be a trigger for abductions. And what happens while you eat? Well, we're just sat eating it. We, we just noticed it's missing time. We were eating Kentucky, we looked at time, two to two and a half hours had passed by. But when I, I noticed all these strange body markings on my body, the bruising everywhere and the needle marks on my right wrist. I get abducted a lot when we're not eating Kentucky like, but the, it seems to happen a lot as well when we're eating Kentucky or anything to do with chicken. As well as seeing ships, Marie believes alien implants have been put in her body. Well, I've got the one in my arm. I mean, it's not attached to anything, it's not sore. Abductees believe these are advanced technological devices that emit radio waves. What's it there? And you can see a slit in my eye here and the silver, it's like a little V thing there going in. Why would aliens put implants in people? Well, we put implants into people to study their biological uh, makeup or, their, or what they eat. Uh, so logically, if another species wanted to do it to us, then they would put implants in us to, um, to track us. First, he checks for any magnetic fields in Marie's brain. Just go around the head. And, ah, right, there's a spike there. There, see it went up to point one? Miles says the average measurement is a third of this reading. Seems to be very, very pencil thin. In tiny dot of an area. Yes, yes. Yeah. I think maybe they're emitting signals and it's spiking because of that. Ah, maybe. there. When you said that, it went up to 0.284. Oh, my God. <laughs> so when you responded to it, yeah. it, it responded to you, whatever it is. Oh, Miles. <laughs> okay, this is... Oh <laughs> Next, he checks for any radio transmitters. In his back garden, Miles has a blackout tent for further tests. So what do I need to take off my top? Uh, just, just pull your, your top up. He's got a special UV lamp to check for any traces left by aliens. A and S research have discovered that if you've had contact with other beings, uh, they leave a residue on your body and it glows in various colours. We're seeing a slight glow there. Marie wants to get that scientific proof. She thinks aliens have tampered with her DNA and made her part alien herself. So she's going to a DNA clinic to find out. I just want to see if there are any changes in my DNA or blood or something that comes up as uh, strange. At least it will be proof and it will lead me on a track to uh, finding some answers, maybe.
Basically, I've had some ET experiences, mm -hmm. and I believe that they've been tampering with my DNA. Okay. So I'm now going to take a mask off from you. Okay. It's, um, I'll show you the swab. I'm going to rub it gently inside your cheek. It's just to pick up a few cheek cells. It's completely painless. Okay, there you are. It's going to take about four days to test it. Okay. Then extract the DNA from the swabs and then profile it. So if there's something okay. not human, I should show up, shouldn't it? Well, if there's an anomaly, <laughs> then you can look at it further, yeah. Okay, yeah. That's really good. Thank you very much for that. Great. Marie will find out soon if she is indeed, biologically, an alien. Hello, Anne. Simon here. Just Simon Parks is so convinced his stories are real, he came out as an abductee to the press. As a Labour Town councillor, he's constantly busy sorting out important local issues. They wanted to sell the shed. And at home, he's kept on his toes by his nine cats. Stop fighting. Brother and sister, you see, they are always at each other's throats. It's very naughty and don't allow it. But he does find some time to go into town for some essential supplies. So that's a good one. Then have that one. And these are nice big thick colouring crowns which are just ideal. I know they're for kids but they're actually absolutely ideal. So we're going to have those as well. Uh, are you talking about for your mum? What yep. green does your mum have? That sort of colour. That's a really good colour. Simon spends hours drawing his experiences. He finds it helps him come to terms with them. Why do you call it mum? Because when I was a very small child, the very first recollection I have is being lifted out of my cot. But having an alien mum isn't Simon's only close encounter. That is the, the being that I claim to have sexual relations with. So I don't have a name. All, all I refer to her as is the Cat Queen. So you have sex with her? Yes. How often? I don't remember all of it. <laughs> um, probably four times a year, something like that. So do you have any alien children? You're looking at one here. This is the name, Zaka. So that's your child? <clears throat> well, yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? A year ago, the Whitby Gazette ran an interview with Simon talking about his alien mum. I've spoken to you, you seem quite compass mentor, so I was quite shocked that somebody of your standing would say something like that. I would just say that there are plenty of people in my position who don't choose to come out and say it because they're terrified that it will destroy their careers. Being open in public hasn't destroyed Simon's career, but he believes it's brought him to the attention of the Secret Service. There's an Audi behind us, and it has been following us all the time, off and on. So would you just like turn your camera around and film him for me out the back window? Because that'll I really... Film through the window. Yeah, as long as you get the index for that vehicle, and just make it obvious that we're filming them. And why would they be following you? Um, well, maybe they just have an interest. And what they're going to do is they're just going to lose it. Like this. This is the sort of thing that happens in my life, but it's just, it's just the way it is. And do you get that a lot, Simon? A great deal, a great deal. We call it cat and mouse, cat and mouse. <laughs>